It's been a while since Microsoft has released the Power Apps V2 trigger for Power Automate. But there is a good chance that you're not even aware of it, simply because Microsoft is trying to hide it. Or are they? Anyway, I will present both of them for you, and you be the judge. But the reality is that from now on that the V2 is available, you should avoid the original Power Automate trigger at any cost. And in this video, we're going to discuss why you should do that. Let's get into it. To show you the old Power Apps trigger inside Power Automate Flow, I created a simple Power Apps app, and there are just two text inputs. One of them accepts the name, the other one accepts the email. And when the user clicks the call flow, it should call a Power Automate Flow and pass the name and the email as parameters to that flow. And Flow should send a dummy email to the email address provided. And the email title should include the name of the person that we entered here. So for example, if I enter Ali Raza, it should say, hello, Ali Raza, and blah, 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 whatever. After that, it doesn't really matter. So let's do and create a Power Automate flow that can handle this job to start with. So I go back to flow.microsoft.com, we log in, I click on create, and I want to create an instant flow. As you can see right here, you will see Power Apps trigger. But if you scroll down, in the very bottom, you see this tiny Power Apps V2 buried under tons of other controls. All right, fine. Let's do the old school first. So I say old school Power Apps trigger. All right, and I click on Create. This is how we used to do it in old days. So let's say new step, we create variables. So I go to initialize variable and I enter the first variable, which is going to be the user name. And I also want to rename this and I call it username. All right. The type is going to be string. And the value that it's going to accept, I say ask in Power Apps. As you can see, when I click on Power Apps here, this trigger does not have anything. But as soon as I add the variable and assign the content of the variable for the username from ask in Power Apps, all of a sudden there is a variable created here called username value. Great. So something has been changed inside this as a result of making a reference to the value that we want to get from Power Apps. If I click on this one and if I click on peak code, you will see there is something called username value. It's an internal value inside this trigger that we really cannot go there and change it. This is something that Power Automate handles it by itself. We are good, we are happy with that. The other parameter that we need is another variable. Again, I click on initialize variable, and this one is going to be user email. All right. I make sure it's string. And again, I rename it and I call it user email. And again, for this value, I say ask in Power Apps. Right. Fantastic. I just need to send the email now. And I click on new step, send email v2, for example, scroll down, and I have it. The message is going to go to add dynamic content, and it's going to be the user email. And the subject is going to be hello world. And the body of the email is going to be hello, and I got to get it from the username variable. And right after that, I just type in the very important email content, which is here. Kind regards Ali Reza. All right. Now pass it to the Google Translate and see what you come up with. Then I save it 
and I should be able to call this. Now keep that in mind. We created two variables and for both of them we said ask Power Apps. Of course, we can still come back here and if you want to add more and more variables, even more parameters, I can click on Ask in Power Apps and again it adds another parameters. At the moment, just keep it at this stage and I click on Save. I go back to my Power Apps and I want to say Call Flow and I click on Action and for the action of this button, I want to call a Power Automate flow, which has been already saved. So the name of this flow is Old School. So let's look for Old School Power Apps Trigger. It says Adding. We are good. Well, let's see if it adds. Very good. It says Complete. So when I come here, as you can see, the Run function needs two parameters. First one is the username. The second one is going to be user email. Great. So I pick the username from txt name.txt. And for the second parameter, I need a user email. So I look for txt email and dot text. There we go. And we are good to go. Let me just save it and test it and see if it really works. So for the username, it's going to be Ali Reza, and I click on Call Flow and see if it does the trick. Apparently, it's complete, and the ding from the Outlook tells me that, yes, it is done, and I received this important email. Fantastic. So it's easy to work with. Lots of things are handled backstage. All the complexities and the variable names, you don't even see them here. And the IntelliSense works perfectly in creating the run function with all the necessary parameters. But and so far, this is what we got before. Now let's get real. I go back inside Flow. And for example, here I want to add something else like, hey, username that I want to add here. I hope you are happy with this message, right? Yes, imagine I want to do that and it works perfectly fine. But all of a sudden, instead of this, by mistake, when I'm here, I say, oh, the username should come from Power Apps and I click on Ask in Power Apps by mistake, right? Okay, now what happened if I just save it? We are good, apparently. But when I go inside the trigger itself, all of a sudden, P code, you will see that send an email v2 body, this internal variable has been created. Uh uh, but no problem. All of a sudden, I remember that no, 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 no. We already had the username here. I just want to get rid of it. And I want to come back here and add the username. Right? Fantastic. Let me just save it. I'm happy. Flow is happy. Flow checker is not happy. And yes, this is the warning. It says, dude, you need to update the Power Apps because all of a sudden parameters have changed. No, 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 we didn't. We just added a variable by mistake and we took it out. But nope. It's still here. If I go to P code, this parameter is still here. Not only that, if I go back to my Power Apps now, my Power Apps at the moment, it doesn't know what's going on. But if I just delete this guy and I want to add it again, Power Automate, let's go to old school trigger. And again, I'm adding this parameter here. You see, all of a sudden, this run call has three parameters, not two, three. Uh, but we added that by mistake. Now, how can we get rid of it? Well, good luck with that one. Yes, you can do that. You can come back here again. And the way to do it, we can, let me just click on done. We can completely delete this, right? We need to add this guy again. And then again, we go to the username, string, and I say, ask Power Apps. 
I go to the email again. I say ask in Power Apps, and now everything is back to normal because we were using the variables. Everything is in good shape. Again, I save it. Again, Flow Checker is not happy, but this time it's okay. We can get rid of this guy. And when I get rid of this, you see the reference to that flow it goes away. So I can click on it again and I can re-add it. All right. And again, we are back to two parameters. And it works as expected. Not a big deal. But here is the thing. Here, once we add a parameter to the Power Apps, the only way to reverse it, at least for now, is to come back here, delete the trigger completely, and re-add it again, and remap all the parameters that we used. And sometimes it's a pain in the neck and quite confusing for people that they are not familiar with this weird behavior. All right, so yeah, we are good. The main problem is a lack of control on the parameters that Power Apps trigger accepts. So basically, it all shows us that the parameters are here. You cannot rename it. You cannot change it. You cannot remove it. And all it adds is automatically created internal parameters that the name is even picked automatically for you based on the name of the action that is first using it. So here, we use the username, so the variable that it created was username value or user email value. Great. So although it looked very simple to use, but not very convenient when it comes to maintenance. Now let's see what Power Apps V2 can bring to us. Now I come back here and I want to get rid of this old school Power Apps thingy. And again, I click on Power Apps. This time I pick Power Apps V2. When you use Power Apps V2, you really don't need these variables. Let me just get rid of them. We actually use these variables because we wanted to pick a proper name for the parameters that the Power Apps trigger passes to Power Apps when we want to make a call. Now things are different. I can say add an input, and this input is going to be, for example, email. And its name is going to be user email, right? I add another input, and this is going to be text. I call it username. And the input, again, is going to come from Power Apps. That's it. Now I go back to my email. The email will go to user email. Instead of username, I come back and I pick username directly from Power Apps Control. Again, for this one, I pick username. Now, if you really want to pick another parameter from the Power Apps, you don't really need to go there and randomly say, ask Power Apps. You come back here in the Power Apps trigger and you literally add a new input with the specific data type here. Not only that, if all of a sudden you added one parameter that you don't really need it, come back here, and delete it. And all of a sudden, everything is in good shape. You really don't need to delete and re-add the Power Apps trigger. Now, let me just save it. Of course, this complaint is still here. You're good. I go back to Power Apps. And again, I just delete this one. Just wait till the data is clear. And then I click on Old School Power Apps trigger again. Now, this time it adds it again. And again, you have email and text. So for the email, I just say txt email.txt. And for the username, I pick txt name and dot text. And we close the bracket, save it, and we can run the app happily ever after. So let me just test it again. For example, Aliraza1, call flow. And there we go. I go back to my mailbox. Hello world, hello Aliraza1. And the last message is here, and we are good. And now you tell me why I don't see the Power Apps V2 as the first choice when I want to create an instant flow that can be called from Power Apps. All right, that was all about it. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about this new trigger in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.